A few of the things that I've been uh, focused on this year. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting going from not being into politics and doing this full time and actually having people call me a politician, which is kind of scary. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this has been a, I've enjoyed every minute of it, getting out and meeting great people, getting to talk to people about so many different issues. And one of the things that I've been enjoying doing this is I've been doing town halls, like I said, since January this year. And one thing that I don't think we do enough is actually talk, when we, even though we may disagree ideologically. If we have conversations, just like in business or in IT, you do brainstorming and you come up with solutions to these problems. But if one side is yelling and the other side is yelling, then we're not actually coming up with any solutions to our problems. And that's something that I've learned working in the military or being in the military and being in IT, being a problem solver. I don't know any other field other than politics where you can sit there and uh, run on, see a problem and talk about it for years without actually solving the problem. Every, everybody's career pretty much in here, you see a problem, you gotta fix it right away. And so that's, that's how I'll, I'll address my work in Congress, if elected. Um, I hope to get you guys support in November. Please go to my website, www.doveforcongress.com. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook. I pretty much respond to everything because I'm an IT guy, so I'm always connected. <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much. God bless you all. I know Mr. Dev also has to run to another yes. uh, candidate forum, so thank you so yes, much for your time so much. today. We yep. appreciate that. So we are waiting on Mr. Thomas O and also um, uh, Corey Stewart, right? So we know that Mr. Stewart will be here in about five minutes, I believe. He's here right now. He's here? Okay. And uh, Michelle, um, how about Mr. O? Oh, oh he's, uh, he's on, he's about three minutes away right now. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead. I see Mr. Stewart coming in the door. So we will go ahead uh, when he gets in here and go to Mr. Corey Stewart because I know he has another obligation as well. Come on up. Sure. So let me introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Corey Stewart is currently the at-large chairman of the Board of Supervisors in Prince William County, the second largest and fastest growing locality in Virginia. During his tenure as chairman, Corey has passed the largest tax cut in the county's history leading to a 30% lower tax bill than any other locality in Northern Virginia, while continuing to hire more teachers, police officers, firefighters, and investing in infrastructure, leading the largest local road building program in Virginia. Corey's kept taxes and spending low, saving residents $205 million, and securing a AAA bond rating status for the county, one of only 36 jurisdictions in the nation to do so. Prince William was ranked as the number one locality in job growth in Virginia and the number three in the nation. He's best known for implementing the nation's crack, toughest crackdown on illegal immigration, resulting in the county turning over more than 8,000 illegal aliens to ICE. Uh, he earned an academic scholarship and graduated from Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service. He was the first member of his extended family to graduate from college. And then he earned a law degree from William Mitchell College of Law, where he graduated magna cum laude. He now works as an international trade attorney with his own practice. He and his wife of 24 years, Maria, reside in Woodbridge with their two sons and are currently hosting three foreign exchange students. Corey and his family are parishioners at St. Elizabeth and Seton Catholic Church in Woodbridge. Welcome, Corey Stewart. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Is this Janet? Wow. Give you a one minute wrap. Question, question answers? I know it's all you. You don't want to listen to me for 15 minutes. I can trust, trust me. <laughs> but thank you, though. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really great to be here. I'm really, really honored that you invited us. And, uh, um, and uh, so, anyway, great to be here. Um, so, for the last 12 years, I've been governing uh, Prince William County just to ourself. It's, uh, the county is now almost a half million people. It's about 470,000 residents, growing by somewhere around seven to 10,000 new residents per year. It's actually the first majority minority county in all of Northern Virginia. The very first one, uh, we're about 55% minority, uh, growing very fast. And uh, I've been governing it th through four elections. Four in, I'm elected uh, countywide in Prince William uh, by all half million or so residents. 
And, uh, you know, we've had our set of challenges. It's been tough, it's very dynamic, it's growing very fast, but we've done some very, very good things. When the recession hit, when the recession hit Prince William County, when the recession hit the United States in 2008 timeframe, and I had just become chairman, uh, we knew that it was going to be a couple of years of hard, far, hard, hard times, but we wanted to get set up because we knew that there was going to be an economic revival at some point, and we wanted to be prepared for that. Well, other jurisdictions raised their taxes as their, their property values uh, went down and they just kept raising taxes. We instead cut our budget by a lot. Uh, that very first year it went down uh, more than $100 million. We uh, cut everything. We cut administration down to the bare bones. But there was one thing we never cut. We never cut education. We never cut transportation. And we never cut public safety. Because at, at the end of the day, that is what all of our residents needed. And that is what business needs. So while others were cutting other things and actually just raising taxes, we focused on the essentials. One of the things that I'm very, very proud of is that Prince William County has the largest road building, road construction program in all of Virginia. And we're in less than one half the size of Fairfax County. Our road construction program is larger than Fairfax County and we have half the population of Fairfax County. It's about priorities. Because right after the recession hit, I went to the business community and I said, what do you all need? What is it going to take to get, America, to get Prince William County just into high gear, developing jobs, economic growth? What's it going to take? And they said, we need three things from you all in the government. We don't need a lot, we just need three things from government. Number one, we need streamlined regulations. We need regulations that are, have common sense, are commonsensical. So we did. We brought in the business community. We didn't just listen to the people in the offices. We brought in the business community and we asked, what is it that's holding you back? What are some of these regulations out there that really don't make any sense anymore? So we cut in half the amount of time in Prince William County that it takes to open or to expand a business. And second, they said we need low taxes. So we cut and we cut and we cut. And today, Prince William County's tax bills, on average, are about half of what the, they're about well, one third less uh, than what they are uh, compared to the rest of Northern Virginia. And in fact, when adjusted for inflation, tax bills in my county today are uh, lower than when I first took office. And we didn't do this, by the way. It wasn't Corey Stewart. It wasn't just the Republicans. It was all of us working together. It was Republicans and Democrats. It was people in the government and people in the business community. It was residents, and we cooperated. And sure, we have our, 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 our changes of uh, differences of opinion, but at the end of the day, what I've learned from governing a big, diverse jurisdiction like Prince William County, and that is we have a lot more in common than we do with that separating us. And in Washington, they're not talking. They're not talking. They're arguing. They're bickering. They're yelling at each other. And meanwhile, they're getting nothing done. It's just the blame game. Republicans blaming Democrats, Democrats blaming Republicans. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And so finally, what the business community asked of us, and that is this. We need adequate infrastructure. We need adequate infrastructure. We need roads. We need schools. We need hospitals. We need that stuff. But everything else, leave up to us. If you give us low taxes, streamlined regulations, but adequate public infrastructure, the business community will thrive, and it has. We're now number one in job growth, as was mentioned, and Virginia number three in the United States of America. And I tell that story because that's what we need to do, not just in Prince William County, not just in Virginia, but all over America. We're nine months into the largest tax cut in this country's history since 1981. And already, we have the lowest unemployment rate in 52 years. 52 years in the United States. That's a long time. Wages for blue collar working Americans are rising the fastest clip in over 22 years. Unemployment rate for African Americans, Hispanics, and Asians, and it's at its lowest rate ever in America. Unemployment for women is at the lowest rate in 65 years. And this is because we have a president 
who has put in place this tax cut. And this is because we have a president who for every new regulation is eliminating two. He's eliminated more regulations in the United States government in, 19 month, in 18 months than all of the presidents in the past 100 years. That's an amazing statistic. That is why our country is booming. That's why America is booming. Now, I want to keep this pe message positive, but there is a difference. Tim Kaine voted against the tax cut. The tax cut on individuals, the tax cut on individuals is set to expire. Tim Kaine has already shown that he's opposed to it. He's already opposed the tax cut here to vote against it. He's not going to renew it. If you put Tim Kaine back in charge, if you put Tim Kaine and the Democrats in charge of the United States Senate, that tax cut that has already yielded all this economic growth, four million new jobs, half a million of which are manufacturing jobs, all of that goes away. All of that economic growth. And when you travel around this state, which I've done a lot of, you see it. You see factories that are coming back to life. You see coal mines that are opening up again. You see Americans going back to work. And when people go to work, they get their pride back. And when people have an income, and they're, they're healthy, everything else comes together. Educational levels start, start coming up. When people are not afraid about their economic well-being, marriages come back together. Drug abuse and everything else, it starts getting better. That is where we're headed in this country. We are headed toward the greatest period of economic growth that this country has seen since the 1950s. We need to keep it going. That is what I will do as United States Senator. I will support the President's tax cuts. I will support the President's agenda. And yes, we're going to do something about illegal immigration. Because at the end of the day, there's a very big difference between somebody who comes across the border illegally, many of whom are committing crimes, and somebody who comes into our country waiting in line, and sometimes way too long, obeys all the rules and comes here because they want to be part of America and they come here lawfully. There's a big difference between an illegal alien and somebody who comes into our country legally and lawfully. That lawful immigration, like my wife is a legal immigrant, lawful immigration is good for America. It's good for America, but it must be legal because that is the only way we're going to make sure that somebody who's coming in is not going to be dependent upon government benefits, that somebody who's coming into this country doesn't have a criminal background, that somebody who's coming into this country isn't coming here to harm rather than help America. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to keep the tax cuts going, we're going to keep the economy rolling, and we're going to make sure that we have good, lawful immigration into the United States and keep America prosperous and great again. Thank you all very, very much. Did you, yes, you did. Thank you so much, Mr. Stewart. So, is Mr. O here? Mr. O? Yes, he is. He is? Okay. Mr. Thomas O. All right, he is here. Come on up on the stage and let me introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Thomas O. He is Virginia's 8th District Republican Congressional candidate. Born and raised in Northern Virginia, Thomas understands the struggles of everyday Americans in our district. To give back to our country, Thomas enlisted and then served as an active duty Army Airborne Ranger officer overseas until his honorable discharge in 2017. Thomas continues to serve as a captain in the United States Army Reserve while working in project management. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Criminology, Law and Society with a minor in Intelligence Analysis and is currently pursuing a Master of Business Administration from George Mason University, and he lives in Alexandria. Welcome, Thomas. Let me tell you, Tanith will give you the one-minute wrap-up signal. So you have 10 minutes, and then she'll give you the one-minute wrap-up. Welcome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful. I just, we drove here, which is campaigning. We just came here from um, Arlington, and now we're going back to oh, towards Tyson's Corner after this. So, uh, yes, you know, you know, I, if you ask me uh, honestly, about six months ago, if I decided to run for Congress, I would. It was never in, in the the thought. Uh, like I said, like she mentioned, I just separated from active duty military last year. So at that time, I was more like, how am I going to pay my mortgage? Because I'm not going to have a job. Uh, <laughs> where I got, where I have to go. Uh, but then after I settled back here, and I grew up here in Northern Virginia, I actually went to Centerville High School right down the street. 
I'm a 100% Northern Virginia product, so if I misspeak on, you can blame the public education system. So please don't blame me. I went to George Mason University as well. So I had a best interest in our home, because it's the only place I can really call home. And I saw that life hasn't been getting easier. And I, you know, when I was, um, and also did an analysis. You know, I, th I think um, interesting, you know, for small business owners, because um, as we're transitioning in the military, I said, well, what if I started my own business? I did a cost benefit analysis, and my fiance was actually a, a small business owner. So she talks to me all the time, taxes, this, I don't even know what this tax is for, tax that, tax that. And at the end of the month, you know, even if you make a, like a lot of money, it might seem to most people, whatever is $20,000 at a month, but after all the lease, um, you know, cost of expenses for goods, you play your employees, there's not much left over, and even if you have a large business and you're raking in 100,000 a month, it's not, the income, you know, after expenses is not too much. And small businesses are the you know, driving factor. Now, in the 8th District, I know that small businesses you know, are under attack. You know, it's, it's, it's hurting, because when small businesses go away, taxes increase to the, the everyday citizens, and their property taxes rises. And we actually see this, especially with um, Alexander City, um, because we can bring in the meals tax. The meals tax is not even a tax on uh, the restaurants. It's actually a tax on your groceries. And with the meals tax, I guess the only people that would benefit, you know, is Fairfax County. Because if you live on a board of Alexandria or Arlington, it's like, well, I'm going to drive to Fairfax County, have my business there. But what this really means to us is that we need to have, we need to take more steps towards a free market economy. You know, honestly, when I was growing up, um, I thought I was a Democrat because I remember I was in elementary school, and my it was when Bush was, uh, George W. Bush was going for, for election the first time. And my elementary school teacher said, well, if you're a minority or a woman, you're just a Democrat. And I said, okay, teacher. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm just a student, right? I'm like a six-year-old kid. And I was like, okay. But I'm only 26 years old now. So and I just thought I was a Democrat. And it wasn't until I went to George Mason University and I took Econ 101, and that just opened my eyes up to Austrian economics. I'm a big fan of Austrian economics. And that you know, explained to me why you know minimum, raising minimum wage hurts people because everyone has a budget and when you raise minimum wage you're left with you know cutting expenses or just the amount of employees you're able to have so you know having a free market economy where I, where businesses and consumers are protected is the right step i want to grow or see the northern virginia go to and we also know that you know as a free market economy and i'm sure you know the small business owners that uh, steps towards socialism does not work at all, um, and then also we need to stop cronyism. And as far as, and that's what we need to do for a free market economy. For example, everyone asks me about Amazon. What? You know, how do you guys feel about Amazon? Honestly, thumbs up, thumbs down for small business owners. Maybe <laughs> down. Well, well, what I mean by we need cronyism is well, if you give Amazon a big tax break, tax shield, whatever program incentive that you give Amazon, you need to make sure that everyone in Northern Virginia is receiving the same benefit. Because that's how you have free market economy. You're not showing favoritism towards one business or another, because that's how you have a fair playing field. And that's the type of representation I want to give. It's about fairness and equality for all small business owners, as well as big business owners as well, to grow and expand. Uh, at this time, I want to take this time to answer any questions that everyone might have. Now, I believe that representatives should represent individual citizens, and it's not more about me forcing my policies on you. It's more about how can I best represent you. If I was a business owner, and if, I guess if, um, from a constituent standpoint, or I want to make sure I have five stars on Yelp, five stars on Google reviews to have the best constituent service, customer service possible. Is there any Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, my name is Chang Lee. I'm reporting from the Korea Times. What makes you run for Congress? And then what do you think about the, your opponent, Daddy Connolly? Oh, uh, sorry again. One more time. My name is Chang Lee. I'm a reporter from the Korea Times. Uh, I, want, I have a question to you. What makes you run for Congress? And then what do you think about the, your opponent, Daddy Connolly? Uh, well, first, uh, thank you, Chang. Uh, my point is not uh, Jerry Connolly's. I'm running against Don Byer, the incumbent. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> he's actually a kind of big business uh, 
a big business owner actually. But the uh, reason why I you know, wanted to run for Congress is I always had an interest in you know, the public sector or helping the people. Uh, that's why I enlisted when I was in high school. I saw that there were real issues going on on CNN. People were risking their lives. And I wanted, you know, at the end of the day, make the world a positive place. And I know we're very divided as a nation. There's no doubt about that. And in the end, we're all Americans, and we, we all want something positive. I like to believe that, you know, as human beings, we want to see a more positive outcome. We just have different ways of, you know, getting there. But, you know, after I moved back here, you know, I served eight years of, eight, eight years of my life for this country, and I realized, you know, life hasn't been getting better. Um, you know, I just talked about the meals tax going up, rent gets really high. We haven't solved the issue of health care. Um, and, and we have tons and tons of geniuses on Capitol Hill and a lot of lobbying groups. And with everything that's going on, I wanted to do something about it. I'm not the type of person to complain. You know, I'm here. A lot of politicians do a lot of talking. But when you actually look at their actions and their voting records and take the time to do research, you might be surprised. And that's why I'm here today. You know, I'm here to listen to you all, to provide representation. I learned in the military, you don't work for your, uh, your subordinates don't work for you. You work for your subordinates because their lives are counting on you. And I decided to run for Congress because I want to serve every constituent in the 8th District or even the National, you know, based on what I vote for. And uh, your second question was, Jerry Connolly? No, 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 sorry. Don Bias. What do you think about uh, your opponent, Don Bias? Well, I think Don Bayer, I, I met him personally. Uh, what, he's a great guy, but I just disagree with his voting record. Right now, his voting record is very hyper-partisan, but a lot of politicians don't even take the time to read a bill uh, what are the cause and effects. They just vote based on having an R and D. Now, I would never vote on bill based on having an R or D, you know, public or Democrat, next to it. Uh, there are very good positive bills that have been introduced. For example, one is the right to try act. That's if you have a terminal illness, you can um, take clinical trials. You know, that helps scientific development. It also gives you a second chance after you exhausted all methods of FDA approved. Cost taxpayers zero dollars, zero dollars. So why would you vote against it? You know, just because it's a Republican bill. Another bill he also voted against was the Human Sex Trafficking Act because of Republic. Who, who in this room honestly wants human sex trafficking? Don't shock me. Okay, good. So that's an example of you know, what the type of representation we need to have. My uh, the Ad at Virginia Disability Group they contact John Barr's office nine times in the last two years to advocate a bill. Costs tax savings too. And this is a bipartisan bill. This is actually sponsored by Chuck Schumer, Democrat in the Senate, and also Republican congressman. This is the type of representation that we don't need in Virginia. And where is he today? Hmm? He, why is he treated minority camps? We had me, an Asian American, my predecessor, Charles Herning, Hispanic. He only showed the one out of six debates, all right, forums. And my predecessor before him was an African American or black. So why is he not here? You know, we need better representation. Does he not care about what it means or what the voices for minority groups? And while we are debated, the, you know, a lot of people say, you shouldn't say you're a Korean American, just tell people you're American. Well, I, I honestly wish that everyone just saw me as American, but the reality is people don't see that. If we all were just Americans, we honestly wouldn't have a black chamber of commerce, we wouldn't have a Hispanic chamber of commerce, and we wouldn't have the Asian chamber of commerce. But this is a reality. But that doesn't mean we want to be separate and different. We all want something positive, and we want to come together as Americans, but we also are very proud of our traditions and heritage. And that's how I separate myself with Don Byron. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So that concludes the Republican candidates. Michelle? Sure, we're going to take a five-minute break. We will resume at 5.15 promptly. Or maybe 5.10. 510 promptly uh, with um, Tim Kaine starting off with the Democratic candidates. Let's oh, take a brief break and we'll be right back at 510 in your seats. Thank you.